Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48's World where we do reviews and tonight we're going to be going over um, Merita Medicine. Excuse me y'all. We're going to be going over Merita Medicine um, Season 7 Episode 14 and it's called Trouble and Spar Red Ice. Okay. Of course, there's always problems over there at Marital Medicine because everybody wants to be in the spotlight. In the spotlight. Okay. But let's go on and get into the episode. But prior to us doing that, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all my new subscribers, all my old subscribers, and subscribers that are waiting. They're pending. They're thinking about. They're anticipating coming over and signing on the dotted line and hitting that notification bell button, letting them know when I drop videos. But whenever you feel like you want to come on over, partake of my video channel, sub to the channel, let you go on and do it whenever you feel like it, baby. <laughs> Ain't no pressure over here. No pressure. Okay. How Teddy Prendergrass said, I won't put you on any kind of pressure. No, it won't be no pressure. All right. But let's get on and get into this um, episode. Yes. The first scene we got, Quad is sitting there waiting for someone to come and have drinks with her. And Lord and behold, guess who, y'all? Guess who it was, honey? None other than Cynthia Bailey. Yes, Miss C. Hill trying to show up on the camp. I'm like, okay, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. What are you trying to do, baby? You trying to jump ship? <laughs> Is the Real Housewives of Atlanta not doing it for you, baby? But okay, they trying to make like they have a good friendship together. Uh, I've never seen them um, be together you know, on the scene before where Quad came over to Real Housewives of Atlanta and they did their thing or whatnot. Maybe it, it did happen that way. I'm not sure. Maybe they do have a friendship outside of the reality shows. But she, meaning Quad, is trying to make us think that they have a relationship with one another. They're very good friends. Uh, she can definitely make Cynthia laugh all the time because when Cynthia's around her, that's all she do is chuckle, laugh, and whatnot. And they just have good fun and good banter with each other, which is good. At least you're hanging out with somebody other than Mike Hill. And Mike Hill putting all those batteries in your uh, bag, making you trying to speak up and say something. Maybe you could do something on uh, Married to Medicine, okay? But mm, let me see. You have to be somewhat married to a guy that's in medicine or you have to be in medicine yourself. Somewhat that type of format. But hell, it is what it is. Real Housewives of Atlanta, but... You ain't no um, wife, Cynthia, so it just, it just is what it is. Portia over there, she ain't never been married. Well, she was with Cordell, but we see how that ended up. Who else is over there? Mm, let's not think it too hard. It's neither here nor there. Let's just keep moving. Okay, then um, they just pretty much just talking here, there, and everywhere. And um, she goes and tells Quad she hopes she meets her uh, forever and always guy soon. And she goes to tell us how her and Mike met. And they met, you know, on Steve Harvey's show. He was having a, a dating show on one of his premieres of or one of his show's episodes. He was having a dating show. And they called themselves going... And he invited her to come on to the show, and they just met each other. It was just love at first sight. But then we had some playback where um, a lot of bloggers had busted her with that incorrect information, saying, yeah, nah, you knew my heel way before that. And Claudia Jordan, when she was here in Atlanta, they did some kind of podcasting show, and Mike Hill was uh, one of the commentators on the particular panel, and they were having a discussion, and uh, yeah, they had met, but Cynthia was trying to make like, nah, the first time she laid eyes on him. 
was uh, on Steve Harvey's morning show or, you know, syndicated show he had. Uh, I don't even know if it's syndicated, so let me not give him too much credit. But when he had his show on television, it was called the Steve Harvey Show. And it was like a little talk show where he would give women advice and this, that, and the third about marrying and men and all like that. But this man, I've been married, what, three or four times? Shy, please. But anyway, um, then, uh, what's her name? Quad was trying to tell us in her confessional session that, you know, she pretty much wanted a man that had this, had that, had this, that, and the third. And pretty much how she kind of encompassed it or encapsulated it to the part being her ideal man had to have a 750 to 850 credit score he had to be very very well man manicured like he had to be like real prim proper and professional okay uh very manicured type of man he had to be super fine and i guess all of that would just blow her mind and, and that would be her total package i like girl get out of here quad Get out of here. You want a flawless man when you're not flawless yourself. Are you kidding me? But anyway, move from that situation. We got um a family dinner going on with Dr. Heavenly and her husband, Damien, and Aurora's around there. You know, got her phone at the table. I'm like, Dr. Heavenly, haven't you told that girl to leave that cell phone? Excuse me. Off of the table so y'all can have some family dynamics talking time, you know, interact with one and each, one another without having, you know, some buzzing or something. You feel like you're missing a text or some, you know, some do gadget uh, running around them. You should just told her to keep keep that stuff on the t on the table behind you, okay? Or turn it off. I don't even want to hear it. I just want to see what's going on with you, uh, so I can tell you what's going on with me. We can catch up on all this uh, social media trending. How you doing in school? Are you feeling like you are being bullied? Tell me what's going on, girl. What she called a little mama, a little chica, or something like that. But um, Alora, Alora ain't trying to feel nothing for her mom. <laughs> She was like, Daddy, can I talk to you? Because Mama just getting on my nerves. She always want to say this, that, and the third. But anyway, lo and behold, her two sons come from college. Um, I'm guessing they're at Georgia State University. Maybe they live on campus. So it was just a little trick of uh, downtown traffic, you know, that they had to go through to get there. Because I really thought when she said they were coming from out of town, I'm thinking they're out of town, like, Maybe the neighboring state like Tennessee or Alabama or um, North Carolina, you know, where, you know, stuff like that. But I don't know. But anyway, they drove. They came home. Their mama had cooked steak and um, it was lobster. And it looked kind of appetizing. Ooh, excuse me, guys. <clears throat> it really did look kind of appetizing. I'm like, okay. I don't know if you just got that out of a... Um, I'm going to say magazine, but did you just cater it and order it and then just put it on the place? Or did you actually seize and get down there and cook that meal? But either way, it was just nice. It was nice to see a family sitting down, trying to talk with each other. But um, you know, the boys come in. They're very well groomed, very well respectful. Just a lot of our, our, a Laura was down there just acting all crazy. And one of the brothers said, well, I don't know. I might have to go and chaperone you. Or no, nah, she don't need to go. And, you know, that's the kind of banter um, brothers and sisters have. You know, like, you don't have your fun and all like that. And then you think you're grown. And you're going to think you're going to, you know, try to tell me what to do. When I know you doing crazy stuff at my age at 14. And then Dr. Helen was sending that to my aunt. Uh -uh. My mama didn't do that. I'm not, Dr. Helen got a pass. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of feeling sorry for her. The reason why she act out the way she do. Uh, it, it's something happened to her in her childhood. Because for her to really sit down there. And want to hold Allura so tight. To where she don't even want her to breathe. Without she trying to test the air quality for her. And then she's you know saying she going to breathe. I don't know. I just, if Dr. Helen don't let that girl go, she's going to rebel and she's going to get in a lot of mess for the negative. Then she even had to think about getting into it because her mama's trying to hold the reins so tightly. You know, I'm like, shoot, you know, I'll be the one that uh, chaperone them. Go on and drop them off her and her crew at the, um, what do you call it, um, at the mall or whatnot or the movie theater. 
and then you know let them go pick them back up what not start that off as a you know a, a navigating tool until you know you get to meet the parents or the children to stand third and you know maybe y'all can learn how to let it go by each stage each stage each stage but don't hold a girl up there you know of course you know she gonna be trying to meet a little boy that's probably already said we know get your parents drop you off i meet you in the move there no we all have done it you know what i'm saying but uh just as long as she's not dating somebody twice her age you know what i'm saying she don't mend about lines somewhere and, and you know it might turn into a be a situation where it's real a man uh unbeknownst to uh laura you know what i'm saying all the kind of things that can happen to kids you know you gotta watch all that stuff gotta meet them kids parents and and, and meet them kids so you can like feel them out in some woods especially if they're gonna be hanging around your child so you know i understand what dr heaven was talking about but you know how she was doing she almost gonna like choke the living life out the child where she gonna be like pretty much like how her mama was you know didn't really get a chance to interact with none of her friends from school because she had to come straight home from school didn't have time where she could go to parties or you know just hang out and you know on the stoop of your step and just chill with your friends or go down the street and chill with your friend you know she evidently she was just very very sheltered but like i said it's a story brewing there maybe she'll let us know about it sometime you know in the near future don't really know but it just is what it is but that was a nice scene i kind of liked it, that that bonding time they had for each other so you know dr heaven star acting crazy uh, which she does all the time we should not take her serious but sometimes she just make you look at her like really you gonna really say that and you gonna stand by it? oh okay but anyway moving from that situation we got toya she's out there I tell tell you ain't learn her lesson and Eugene ain't learn his either. He gonna work himself to a graveyard, early graveyard, fooling with Toya and her uh large interests, I should say. I mean got a gorgeous house and she doesn't work, but Eugene works a hell of a lot of jobs in the medical field to be able su to support her desires, her wants, her needs, and then he's trying to be a good provider as well as father or dad to his kids and you know be a um a good person a good uh lover friend um uh, comrade to his wife uh toya but i'm like damn Gigi, you gonna die early death you keep fooling around with toya and trying to get her all this high price stuff i'm just saying you know i know it's good to make your wife happy and all this kind of stuff a good god you know what i'm saying why are you going around and talking? She gonna have a housewoman party, and she gonna spend about ten k, and that's on the lower end, cause she could go higher, cause she got it like that. <laughs> I said, child, I hope you pay your taxes. I hope you pay your mortgage. Uh, I hope y'all not, you know, living from pillar to post, from post to pillar, stealing from Peter to pay Paul. I hope y'all not doing that. Because, Eugene, you look tired every time you be taping, son. You be looking tired. Unless Toya is spending all her money that she's making from um, the Married to Medicine um, franchise. Uh, she's taking all her money and putting it into the house. I, I mean, I don't know because I'm like, mm, Toya got you strung out, Eugene. Eugene, Toya got you strung out. Oh, she talking about she want to have a, a party worth 10K. She want to invite between 100 to 120 people. I'm like, girl. Mm -mm. She talking about she want to have live entertainment. She want to turn up. She want to turn up like it ain't nobody's business. And of course, she got a little cute scene in there. Uh, with her kids trying to help her make tacos and all this kind of stuff. And I think his name is Ashton. He kind of reminds me so much of Alora running his mouth, getting in grown folk beard to know he need to be seen and not heard type of scenario going on. I thought Eugene was going to check him, but he ain't too much checking. But he was trying to say, don't be uh, messing with the cook. Don't be talking about the cook. They making money and making food or something. What you doing? I'm like, ooh, child, ooh. Uh-uh, it's reality TV, and yes, our kids do try to mouth off, but not with parents that they know they ain't going to be able to get away with that mess. Because some parents, like my mom would, you ain't got freedom of speech. No, when I tell you to speak, you speak. Then you can have all the freedom of speech you want. But if it's around grown folk, 
caution, tread lightly. It better be something that a kid need to be saying to get permission from an adult. And it better be important, okay? Because right now you in grown for a business. When you should be out there in the yard playing in your room doing something, whatever. But you right now you, 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 you're getting kind of close to hmm, getting that backhand slap. You know what I'm saying? They ain't play back in my day, okay? Not my parents. But anyway, it just is what it is. We move on. We're trucking on. We're going to uh, Scott. He's um, calling his cell mad, pouting, but muddling through it. Um, he's taking care of the kids. He's feeding them. And, you know, damn, he feeding them kind of good. It's like some grown folk would sit out at the table and eat and partake of. Making a little salad and, you know, sauteed it up, salmon and stuff. Okay. Okay, he don't need Contessa for this. Okay, but maybe they ain't kids that want to wash dishes and then like that. I don't know. <laughs> but Todd, I mean, not Todd. Scott said, I don't work hard. I ain't got time to be full of with these damn kids running around him. And he's trying to tell them to do their homework. He said, Go with one of the children. He said, Well, just go look at some homework. Just show me that you did some at school. Hell, you know what I'm saying? And then he's trying to make it good, make it look good for camera purposes filming purposes as well but the post got <laughs> they don't beat him down to the pope honey they don't beat him down to the pope you got contessa's um um what do you call it? Counselor coming over, meeting with them, trying to do a session at home with them and trying to make Scott see the error of his ways and this, that, and third. And I'm like, okay. Scott just said, okay, y'all don't beat me down to a pole. I agree. I'm going to agree to disagree, but this is what I, I need to do to get out the doghouse. Okay, I admit it. I put my kids in the middle and I'm trying to make them make mommy feel guilty. Yes, we guilt tripped her. You know, I, I set the, um, uh, the play idea for them to catch on to and they caught on because they small kids look at me and they mom so they 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 played on her uh sympathy and we got her back at home which what we wanted her from the beginning but it just is what it is but i was wrong scott said i'm wrong i'm sorry go back to school shit if it's gonna calm you down is it gonna make you come back or you feeling happy about yourself and this day and third okay i'm gonna do it all right File on me, file on me. Go on and finish school. When you finish school, you ain't going no more. Okay, you just get this, just be uh, content with what you got going on. Cause don't nobody need to go back to school. We, we done schooled out. Okay, we need to worry about putting our children through school. Okay, so maybe hopefully they'll take care of us one day. Or at least put us or keep us in a lap of luxury, even if it's in a senior community home. You know. Just make sure the bills are paid for us because we just want to sit in there like kids. We don't, we don't want to do nothing. We don't worry about nothing. You know, so we raised our kids right. They do right by us. So he pretty much was telling, you know, the counselor as well as his wife can tell so, Look, babe, I'm proud of y'all. You know, I'm sorry I never told you that, but it seemed that's what you needed to hear. Even though I, I always felt it, I just didn't like bring it out where you could physically hear it i didn't verbalize it enough to you so baby thank you for being you i'm proud of you uh and all that you're trying to accomplish all that you have accomplished yes yeah, scott just putting it all on the table okay and um like I said, he even told her, yeah, he was sabotaging this whole situation. He didn't really finesse that word. He don't too much care for that word. But if that's what y'all call it, I guess that pretty much fit the bill. Oh, yes, okay. But I want you to go back to school, girl. Go on and be your she Roy. Do what you got to do. Whatever. Boo, boo, boo. Okay? Because pretty much Contessa was just starting out with saying the, com uh, the communication between us is strictly poor. Um... Uh, he totally disrespects me and whatever I feel I need to do for myself and this, that, and that. And, you know, it's got like white flag. I wave it. I'm tired of this, okay? Just, I'll make it like it was the way it used to be when I hunger for your love. Was it patiently? That was Scott was trying to tell her, honey, make it like it was. I'm tired of getting beat up on the head. I got people on this side beating me up. I got people on this side beating me up. And then you beat me up in front of me. And, Lord, they're throwing bricks and, 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 and knives in my back. I just broke down. <laughs> I just broke down. <laughs> okay, forgive me, baby. That's pretty much what he was saying. 
And that was a cute scene. They hooked it out. They kissed it out. They gonna be fine. But just like, I'm not like Tessa. If they come back for another season, I don't want to hear no more. I, re I really don't want to hear no more whining about what Scott don't let you do, what you should be doing, what you could be doing. Cause I mean, you gift tripped him too, and you, you made me even sick. I want to even just write into the show and say, Scott, please let that child go back to school. Please, just how you were made. Uh, ask a family member to come in and see what they can do. Do something, honey. Hell, send the kids up there with her. <laughs> Woo! Something. Just get some peace of mind back in your your uh, aura, your life, honey. Get some peace of mind back. Okay, then we got, um, let me see. Let me see. Oh, they're playing some clips where... Um, Buffy is calling herself getting something together for the women to have like an outreach, uh, a coming to Jesus type moment. Some solidarity amongst the women. So she's uh, renting out some type of late front property where she can go and have a spa day with the women she's already done taking herself up to the the cabin or lake house or whatnot and getting it all set up and she got yoga people coming out there she got people massage masseuse people coming out there to do their little doing thing and she even told the women just to come to her house and she's gonna have their chariot await them and bring them out to wherever she was in that lakefront community property and of course um, they showing past clips of her and Dr. Jack getting into it. Hell, her and Dr. Jack and Dr. Heavenly getting into it. You know, when they was over there in Cabo, uh, St. Lucas, Mexico. Okay, so they're just showing, you know, different things. Uh, even towards the end when they were supposed to have been saying what they wanted to leave in, um, what you call it, leave in Cabo and come back with, you know, a positive attitude. Just leave all the dissension, the chaoticness, the negativity there in Cabo and come back and start fresh. Start anew. You know, that's pretty much what she was trying to um, say or whatnot. Or they were trying to show us clips of what was going to transpire uh, with her getting all the women together and coming to like a peaceful union with one another and just exercise meditate and, and get centered for the better um and like i said they were showing clips and this that and the third um then the ladies uh leave georgia they get to uh their destination through their little bus ride and they're there at buffy and you know buffy's going around doing all this yelling and i'm like jacket too i can't stand all that yelling it's just like yeah Welcome, welcome, welcome. How y'all doing? I'm mean, like, girl, we are not on no farm and we ain't coming to be rodeoed to death. All right, what the hell are you doing with all that high pitched voice? Okay. But Toy, she was all like, you know, going around. She was trying to look at the atmosphere, the avion. She liked the food. She liked some of the sculptures that were hanging around the house. And she was just loving it. She said, Ooh, I'm into this. Yes, child. Yes. Talking about massaging, masseuse me. Ooh, take me a whole body. Toy got some big thighs. Oh, she got some shoes from my They don't really look that big. But I guess when you're laying down, it just is what it is, huh? But anyway, then, I don't know what's wrong with Mariah. I'm like, girl, are you handicapped? you always breaking something. Ankle, toe, knee, whatever. I'm like, boo, what is going on with you? Always doing something like this. Ain't pushing you down, girl. What's going on? Tell us the day. Oh, it just couldn't be me. It just couldn't be me. I'm like, damn, you ain't you, you walking too fast or something? It's always a toe broken or ankle. I'm like, girl. But anyway, she bring her um sister with her to look after her like she really needed some looking after. I'm like, come on now. I think it was just a poor a plot being festered to start drama, which none really even happened. But her and Quad, meaning Lake, her sister, Mariah's sister named Lake. And Quad had some back and forth old beef. And I'm thinking Mariah just brought it along. She didn't feel well enough to start no beef on her own. But she needed the dramatization going on. So she said, let me bring my sister with me. And maybe can start up some stuff with Miss Quad. <laughs> but it really didn't happen now. It didn't really happen. Mm -mm, nothing really happened. Transpired that would cause like, ooh, that was some good tea. That was some good drama. Ooh, keep fighting and fussing. I love it. Not that kind of stuff going on. Mm -mm. 
Um, but Dr. Jack is really doing a lot of shading towards Buffy and the whole thing that she had got together for the women. But I, I mean, Jack was being kind of salty, but I was like, ooh, if, if she don't stop all that hollering going around here, I'm going to have to have a, a, a little talk with her myself. I'm going to turn the TV off because it's just too much. I couldn't stand it. Like, mute it and then come back when she's gone somewhere else and the ladies are just talking. You know what I'm saying? Because she would get on my nerve to all that holler. I don't know what wrong with her, but she high. I want to add, was she high, Lord? Was she high? What was going on with her? Was she drinking too much? Was she puff, puff, pass, pass, gone? I, I don't know. But Buffy was just being a little bit too extra, okay? Um, then you got Toya. She's noticing that jo Dr. Jack is kind of feeling a little uneasy because she ain't really showed no body movement. She didn't really want to participate. She just wanted to sit on that sofa in that space and, and, and just look at everybody. <laughs> Like she thinking to herself, how the hell did I get trapped up in here with these people? And especially the person who's hosting, which is Buffy Parcell. I cannot, I will not. Can somebody save me? That looked like what she was trying to say. And Simone, you know, being very intuitive of her friends, she went over there trying to rescue her, telling her it's going to be okay. Breathe, breathe, and then breathe again. Okay. Um, but Buffy comes out telling everybody to get into their, um, swimsuits or whatever they, you know, whatever they can so they can get a good, nice rubbing massage. And, of course, Tori come out in her little two-piece and, ooh, child, and Dr. Simone was like, oh, are you showing too much? These white men, they ain't going to be able to take all this on this black chocolate body. She went and tried to throw a, a towel around. <laughs> No, honey, she ain't twerking and, and, and tricking for like uh, Lizzo out there at that Lakers game with that ass being carved out like she was Prince or something. Girl, no, it's not a Lizzo uh, malfunction, what, what do you call it, a uh, wardrobe type of thing going on. No, it ain't like that, but mm, it is what it is. But she was in an appropriate place. She was getting a massage, and, you know, you don't need a lot of uh, clothing on to be able to, to receive that type of massage. So I understood exactly where uh, Toya was talking about, and Dr. Simone just wrong. She's just trying to be extra. Okay, but Toya had four people on her, honey. Not one, not two, not three, but four people working on her body. And she was just moaning and groaning like she was getting some good sexing going on. Okay, like Eugene was just in her mind or some man was in her mind. He was just doing her real good to where all the women were looking at her like, is she real? Is she for real? Does she know she being taped on TV? And um, Dr. Helen, she said, ooh, child. She having an organic experience over there. You know, all the ladies were just teasing in, but Tori didn't care, honey. And then I don't know where Buffy get these goats from, child. She trying to uh, put it in some of her yoga exercise and whatever meditation. And I don't know what, ooh, them goats was jumping on uh, Dr. Heavenly bag. They were eating Contessa's hair. Contessa even up ended up trimming some of her hair because the goats was trying to eat it. And then one of the goats uh, defecated on, or, and I don't know what defecated mean, meaning she did, on one of the uh, exercise pads. Like they were getting too friendly out there with the goats. And the goats were getting too friendly with them, I guess, where they felt comfortable to have a little squat and, and, and do the number two. Ooh, child, that was a hot mess. I like, uh-uh, where these goats come from? Because that, that, that would have messed up my whole aura. I, I think it was supposed to be some type of uh, normalizing and desensitizing type the goats were supposed to bring to the yoga experience. But uh -uh, that, that, that would have heightened my uh, anxiety. You know, it would just been putting me out. And, ooh, honey. Um... Dr. Jackie didn't take partake of that. She got the massage done by the masseuse, but she like, I ain't no goats. I ain't, I ain't with no farm animals in this and third. I don't even know where they're coming from. Then she was, uh, let me see, Mariah was saying the same thing. She like, mm-mm. But Mariah couldn't do too much. I don't even know why Mariah came. I guess it was camaraderie. <laughs> She was asked so she came because right, she knew it was going to be lush and plush because Buffy got that kind of taste going on. So she didn't have to worry about, you know, unnecessary sleeping on or being part of something very hard and not plush right, in her uh, words or her way of thinking and viewing things. Child, I was like, mm -mm, that was a hot mess. But Married to Medicine was okay. Like I said, it was, it was really, I gave it a C. It wasn't really... <sighs> 
it was advertiser friendly. <laughs> Let's put it like that. It was PG. It was really no real things going on that you could really bite your teeth in and sink it in and let it marinate in your mind. It was nothing like that. So I'm glad they're coming up for a reunion because I think they don't gave all they could give for this season. Okay. Um, but that's all I had. I hope y'all enjoyed. Put down them comments. Let me know what y'all thought. Uh, what y'all saw different as far as perspectives. What I left out that you wish I would have talked about. Or tell me what y'all um, highlights of the show was that I didn't cover. Uh, I definitely love to hear those uh, takes or viewpoints. Uh, other than that, thank you again for coming to the channel. Spending some time with me. Whether you spent the whole video, half of the video. Or maybe just five minutes of the video. Okay. It, I, I really am thankful because you didn't have to give me that. But um, thank you for my new subscribers, my old subscribers. And the ones that are thinking about subscribing to my channel, please come on over. It's a family affair. We love to talk. We love to uh, digest material, uh, reflect on it a little bit, and then spit it back out. In some type of normalcy of what we thought our perspective was of what we were viewing as a subject matter. But other than that, y'all be blessed and I'll see y'all next uh, video which will probably be tomorrow because I don't talk myself out guys I have talked myself out but I am going to get on that uh, www.foxsoul.com and speak on it when it comes to Mike Hill and all this stuff he's got going on over there He got it's called uh, Mike and Donnie show or something like that and then you have some other people that um have their shows on the same streaming platform uh there's a few doctors over there one of them in particular he's a black doctor i don't forgot what his name is but he interviewed t boss when they she was talking about her adopted son he was real good i liked him might check out some of his stories and bring it on my platform from my perspective of what i felt about a particular topic he was discussing but yeah honey yeah i gotta talk about mike because he said something um they were talking about cheating was the subject matter he was um speaking on with some other guys and he was giving the reasons how he didn't like you know two of his relationships which he was married that's why i got the information where he was married two times and um the first like i said the first wife was he was married to he said he was a complete dog he cheated 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 to it was you know like she was out of style and then the second wife he had uh he was being faithful for up to eight to nine years or seven to eight years and then he just couldn't take it anymore <laughs> he had to cheat again so i'm like child cynthia what is you getting yourself into when it comes to this little man who has admitted to cheating okay and like the part of cheating to a certain degree girl mm, mm. i'm just saying it's hot that's hot news right now but i get into it before the week is over with let y'all uh get y'all take on it and y'all spill and tell me what y'all think about it okay she said yes but they ain't solidified nothing in 2020 october hadn't come in yet so hopefully she'll get a clue all right, maybe she'll go to the Wizard of Oz, the Emerald City, and talk to the man behind the curtain, okay? And get some real advice. Okay, I'm just saying, wink, wink. <laughs> but y'all be good, and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.